Hey there, Fellowship family. Welcome to your one-stop shop for all things church life. I'm Mark Francis, once again, your host for today. Well, we have been engaged in a, a little bit of a fall uh, series of episodes that are carrying us through and, and explaining a little bit about what are happening behind the scenes or even in the main scenes of Fellowship Bible Church. Um, it has kind of been neat to see even last week with congregational care and the week before with the worship ministry and go back to all those episodes if you haven't watched or listened to them. And by the way, there was also that release of a, a full version of the video that we shared in church several weeks ago. So that was released on Monday. So look for that as well. I am here with an amazing couple that you may or may not know. They've been around church for a while. So that's why I say you may or may not know. We're here to chat today about the counseling ministry. So I have with me Ken and Rosemary Spence. How are you guys? We're great. We're good, thank you. So excited to have you guys here. And we are unfortunately missing the fearless leader, John Avery, who is um, the pastor, pastoral overseer of this ministry. He's feeling a little bit under the weather, so wasn't able to be with us today, but I know it's in capable hands because mm -hmm. you guys can carry the torch. And it's, an, it's a true testament and example of uh, the church doing the work of the ministry, and you guys uh, are a model of that, and I want to let you guys share just how you've been a part of FBC. So give us the history. When did you first come to church here at FBC, and what, what drew you to the church? Do you remember what year that was, how long ago? Well, we've been, uh, we, we started here uh, about in, in 1990. Hmm. Um, the church wasn't exactly in its infancy, but then we kind of grew up to the church from that. You know, when we first started, there were about 125 people. So that's the same time as Mark Carey, maybe, right? Uh, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very similar. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we kind of grew with the church. And, of course, as the church grows, the, uh, the church has more problems. And uh -huh. uh, that's, uh, that's how we <laughs> Don't got... we all have problems? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, that's, and that's how we got into the, the really basically the counseling ministry about uh, Rosemary and I. Uh, started uh, about uh, 10 to 15 years ago, okay. and um, we got our training at Lafayette, Indiana, where they have uh, more or less formal training for counselors, and uh, we brought that training with us to, hmm. to FBC, and uh, that's uh, and we've been using it ever since. Hmm. And you guys, when you first started coming to church, I know instantly were part of what was back then mini churches and mm -hmm. community yeah. group, and you are leaders from that standpoint. I feel like that half of the church has been in and out of a group that you guys have led <laughs> over the many years. So Could be. Yeah. Could be. So Rosemary, talk about how you guys got plugged into church and how you grew in, in just ministry here at FBC. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, like Ken said, we started coming and attending in 1990, especially because of uh, the type of teaching that Mark Carey did. Mm. We really have enjoyed that kind of biblical teaching. Mm -hmm. And so we... Uh, Mostly we were involved in, involved in many churches or community churches now. Uh, that's what they're called. And we found that to be very, very helpful. But there came a time in our lives when we found that we needed counseling. And I think uh, that was one of the reasons that we got involved in counseling uh, later on. Hmm. But just to step back, um, our older son, Brad, was, uh, he, uh, and still is, a, a leader in our ch a church in Kentucky. And they had a very unique type of counseling that was different than the uh, uh, a biblical-based type counseling that John Morrison had mm -hmm. used. And there came a time when uh, John just felt like he wasn't able to affect the changes and help people in the way that he wanted. And I told him about the church in Kentucky. So John Morrison and Mark Carey went and visited that church. And that's when they became uh, aware of what is called ACBC counseling. And, and that is uh, done through an organization and a church in uh, Lafayette, Indiana. Hmm. And so then we started going to that church to receive training and bringing the training back to this church. And uh, from that, uh, that is now the basis of our counseling uh, materials and all. Yeah, and I know that it's, it's 
unique, well, not, it's sad to say that it's unique, but biblically based. Right. right? And that's, to say that this is foundational, biblically based counseling to assist people who just need a little course correction, right? right? I mean, if, <laughs> or I, a well, major course or correction. Major, but don't <laughs> yeah. we all? Yeah. You know, so I, I think that it's been several years now since, you know, where I know John Morrison was heavy with that. And now since he's left, John Avery's taking the mantle. But years ago, this key word kind of came out of this idea of called authentic fellowship, where counseling the word itself seems very scary. I know you, you have think this... of a couch and a guy with a pipe sitting right? there making notes. This it... is not that. Okay, so this is, again, biblical counseling, which is this true authentic fellowship that you know, you're engaging in this world of helping, but also partnering, coming alongside somebody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So last week, we, we heard a little bit about the, counts, the, the care ministry where there's Stephen's ministers. Mm -hmm. and, and so unpack a little bit of the difference of just listening to somebody versus counseling versus even discipleship. Uh, unpack this world of like what is unique about biblical counseling that um, is more than just being a listening ear I think, to somebody. I think the basic difference uh, between the Stephen's ministry and the counseling ministry is the Stephen's ministry is a, a, a help um, ministry. Encouragement. And, and, and uh, biblical counseling is uh, almost totally focused on using the Bible to uh, look into people's lives and see where they need help hmm. and address the, the solutions that the Bible has. For the problems that they're gonna that they're gonna get into, um, the um, benevolence uh, works more with the um, uh, with the with the group that uh, that we don't we don't get into. We don't get into benevolence yeah. unless uh, I shouldn't say we never get into it. But basically, that's more the help section. Uh -huh. Whereas we're more of the let's address these problems biblically and 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 uh, focus on those things in the people's lives that are that are going wrong uh, because they're doing something that's unbiblical. Yeah. I heard you say encouragement mm -hmm. versus solutions. Right, almost. right. Exactly. That's yeah. a good way to say in, it. In biblical counseling, you are looking for and expecting change mm -hmm. because God is powerful. Because, uh, and in his word, he has uh, the answers, the directions, the help, the power that you need to do those things. So we access what he has already mm -hmm. given in his word mm -hmm. to help people through rough times mm -hmm. and um, how to to grow in his word mm -hmm. uh, so that they can be able to live in a way that is more Honor spiritual. More. Yeah, honors God, spiritually yeah. strong. Yeah, it's a, a strengthening, yeah. but it's doesn't has to. It's not the strength of the counselor; mm -hmm. it's the strength of the Lord. But we offer it to them. Christ through working the through you, the Spirit working right. through you to right. present Scripture mm -hmm. uh, in a way that is going to rub shoulders and yes. rub. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, iron and iron. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to encourage more than just encourage, but point them to. Right biblical truth in a way that in inspires and encourages change right to mm -hmm. have that solution. and gives them hope that is the right. that is almost like mm -hmm. the number one thing that if if you went over the six or seven steps of biblical counseling is f they need to have hope they're mm. coming to you thinking that they're in a hopeless situation and with with the word of god and somebody taking time to speak into their lives and meet with them, hmm. they find hope in the Lord and the strength of his word. So, I mean, you guys have been doing this for 10, 10 15 years, about 10 years, 18, of 18, close to 20 years almost, almost 20 now. 20 years yeah. now. You mm -hmm. guys have been involved in mm -hmm. counseling other people. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure you've seen a lot of change out of people. Mm -hmm. Get, paint a picture of an example of a success story or two of where I hate to use the word success, a God story of okay. where you were able to see growth in, in individuals that you guys work well, with. And Mark, I think a lot of times what uh, people get into, especially marriages, um, is where unforgiveness is involved. Mm -hmm. So 
uh, we speak to that and go to the Bible and, and ex explain what the Bible says about for forgiveness. And that's, uh, that's where we see the biggest changes. I think I've seen the biggest changes is in people who being willing to forgive the other person because if they can't forgive the other person, uh, they're not going to progress in their relationship and the, the issues in their, in their marriage or in their personal lives uh, can't be addressed until they get past that barrier. Hmm. So that's, that's one of the things that we as, we as counselors um, make sure that we get, to, first, first step is get into the Bible. You know, get in the Bible. What does the Bible say about your problem? Hmm. And people say, and many people might say, uh, well, the Bible doesn't address my problem. Well, the Bible addresses almost every problem. Uh, sometimes they they don't have the nomenclature that uh, we'd see in the secular world. Mm -hmm. You know, we have people who, are, who suffer from bipolarism, and they think, well, the Bible doesn't say anything about bi bipolarism. Well, it doesn't name hmm. bipolarism, mm -hmm. but the symptoms of bipolarism are addressed in Scripture, hmm. that sort of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So I was just going to say, so uh, a couple uh, are uh, names are typically given to us through the counseling office. People mm -hmm. fill out a, a, a survey of their situation, who they are, and what they're dealing with, and. Uh, and then Sherry Libby, the secretary in there, mm -hmm. she sends it uh, to Kenneth and I. We tend to do mostly couples counseling. Okay. And uh, so we look over that material. But a lot of times they feel like there is not any hope for their situation. Hmm. Sometimes they just need, an, sometimes they recognize that they just need somebody to speak, to be. <laughs> To be a kind of a a uh, a go between or a uh, referee, sometimes. referee yeah. or Mediator. something, and sometimes yeah. you do that. Yeah. But when they start to say something, and the other one, you can see the looks on their faces. We we ask them to stop and say, "Okay, now what what does God say about this?" Or or we'll give a verse, or we'll say a passage. How do you see this could be something that would be helpful? Mm. And it's like when they begin to see the power of that, when they find a way to communicate. Mm. A lot of times they just say, "We don't communicate." Well, they do communicate. They <laughs> yell and they, <laughs> they just communicate and, the or they walk yeah. out of the room, yeah. or they communicate. But they need to learn to communicate God's way. Hmm. Sounds like a lot. So a lot of marriage counseling is for kind Kenneth of and I. We do a what, lot what of marriage counseling. Yeah. Yes. What other kinds of forms of counseling then? Maybe that you guys aren't necessarily part of, but does the ministry cover uh, individual counseling? De um, depression okay. uh, is is a, a big one. Uh, well, individual uh, problems, uh, maybe for guys especially, uh, de deception meaning they lie. Hmm. Um, you have to address that issue and you go to, there's so many places in the Bible that talks about deception and lying and you, you work, you, you wade through that those scriptures with them and uh, hopefully they see that, hey, this is a problem that a lot of other people have and other people have walked through it with mm -hmm. success. And um, as like Rosemary says, you have to give people hope. Hmm. And if you, um, because if they don't have hope, they're not gonna, their, their, their effort's not gonna be, not gonna be in on 100%. Mm -hmm. You know, what's it, uh, I hate to say it like this, but they're, they're, they're thinking, well, what's in this for me? <laughs> well, and they're, they're right. I mean, this is, they're human beings. Right. And what we try to do is say, this is, this is what the benefits are of, of doing it this way, doing it the biblical way versus the way you're doing it now, maybe. Mm -hmm. And you guys mentioned certain steps and, and going to this training mm -hmm. in Indiana over the many years mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. shown uh, kind of a a progression right. that you guys walk through. Mm -hmm. Give us an example of what some of the sessions might look like and the progression that you're, what are the goals that you're trying to accomplish out of meeting with another couple? Well, it starts with uh, gathering information about the people that you are meeting with. Uh, we, of course, we have that survey that they've filled out in the counseling office, but we ask questions about that. We, we try to get a picture of how they're living life. Uh, I, John Morrison would always say to us, "Can you, if you were to a, write, uh, if you were to create a video of their lives, what mm. what would be in this video? What do you see happening? The dynamics between them and all, and uh, and so then 
uh, after some information is, is gathered from them, you begin to figure out what is, what is a, a biblical response to this? What is an encouragement from God's word? And, and how that they can grow in that. And uh, all along, giving hope, letting them see that there is an answer for their circumstances, whatever it is, uh, in his word. Because he's hmm. our creator. Hmm. And, and the goal is to where, like, you, you don't meet with these people permanently, indefinitely. No. But the goal is that there is a moment of... Uh, release and right. say they okay own it. you yeah they, they yeah. own it and that's yeah. that's uh and that's one of the one of the goals that we have is we don't want them to become dependent upon us yeah they have to be dependent upon uh, uh the the biblical scriptures mm -hmm. and uh, that's that's we we move them in that direction so they aren't dependent upon us now we're always available as a, as you know as uh in the background we like to say in the background we always tell people if you need help mm. give us a call and we'll talk um but you're uh, otherwise we feel that we've provided you enough information mm -hmm. that you you can work it out on your own a little different than the world's perspective of counseling oh, you imagine yeah. A, yeah. a professional yeah. counselor is in it for the business and mm -hmm. yeah. let's keep having you come back to me you know because mm -hmm. you've got to let's fix this and <laughs> fix that and up. yeah have another follow-up in a month and and here yeah the, the goal is not to have people keep coming back mm -hmm. but to when, release them to say okay trust god in this we're, and we're never sending them out alone. Right. They're always going with the Lord. Mm. So the, the sooner they they really grasp that and and begin to see the changes in themselves and for us, their spouse, because of the couple situation, that is a great encouragement mm. to them. This Again, this is a, somewhat of a behind-the-scenes ministry at our church. Yes, we talk about it a little bit, but that's where I find this conversation encouraging that we can bring to light that this is going on just ballpark give us a scope of this ministry at fbc uh, the, the number of counselors or the the people who are coming through maybe it just paint a picture because it's not just the ken and rosemary counseling show <laughs> no, it or it's not just john avery and you know mm -hmm. what kind of team is in place that that we're that god is using you guys and others to to do this work well and that and uh, that, the, the that's a good point the what we uh, strive to do too is keep everything confidential mm -hmm. and uh, consequently um, uh, we want to make sure that people know that their information doesn't get out of mm. the, the limited area in which we talk about mm -hmm. and so they uh, they have to trust us to, to keep their the things that they tell us are again confidential and that's uh, uh, so really, we have no idea yeah. how many people are being counseled. Uh, you know, we hear about general trends, but mm -hmm. we don't. Uh, that That's all done at the counseling office. Uh, those people that work there would would have a good idea, but... At FBC. And so, ballpark, how many, I mean, are there is there a need for more counselors? There's always people? a need for more counselors yeah. because, mm -hmm. you know, it's surprising mm -hmm. even in a church where we are well instructed, people still have trouble taking the instruction that we receive on a Sunday morning mm -hmm. or Saturday evening or other times here at church. Mm -hmm. They still... Mm -hmm need somebody to help them plug in that truth to their specific yeah. circumstance yeah. with a love mm -hmm. and a care that uh, mm -hmm. makes it easier to receive, shall I say? I feel like there's potentially two audiences that are watching or listening to us. There's those that say, oh my goodness, I really need this. I'm going through a difficult time and mm -hmm. I didn't realize that this was available to me. Or there can be an audience that's out there saying, wow, I feel like that's something that I might be a little gifted in. And God is probing me to, and priding me to say, let's just go and get out of your comfort zone. And what does it look like to counsel another person? What does it look like to be a leader in that capacity? So mm. there's audiences here that I, I find that we can maybe address. So the first... Let's talk about, you know, if you're really going through a situation, difficult time. You mentioned you can call the church office and you right. fill out Counseling a survey. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you have friends who you could refer. This is something that uh, is not just for FBC members. No, it's right? not. This is not just for people who attend the church. Walk us through the, 
the it, how this ministry has blossomed outside of the church. Well, we are one of the few churches in town that provide counseling and maybe only one or two other churches have any kind of biblical counseling mm. so that we have people from the community that come to our church for count biblical counseling and pastors send people from their churches to our church for biblical counseling so that is that makes it uh beyond the doors of of this church yeah. uh, and because of that, um, because we're a, a unique ministry uh, within this community, we get we get uh, customers, so to speak, from many of the other churches. As a matter mm. of fact, probably half of the people mm. that we counsel are not from our church, mm. from FBC. Mm. Uh, and we don't charge. Right. And we so don't charge, yeah. which is We've, another big selling point. By yeah. the way. Right. We've had people that came uh, call the church because they put in uh, just on the internet. Uh, where is where is free counseling mm. in uh, mm -hmm. the Winchester area or something? Mm. And there and our church is the only one that comes up. What an opportunity! To, yeah, to where people probably might not be believers. And oh well, and we've had we've had unbelievers. Yeah. that we've counseled. And, yeah, uh, yeah, and the people learn about us on the internet. I think the mm -hmm. last couple of people I've counseled uh, learned about us on the internet. Mm. The, the last uh, couple of of uh, people that I've, um, I kind of triage the, um, we call them intake forms, actually data, gather gathering forms. And uh, it asks on that form, where did you learn about uh, counseling at FBC? And or, uh, they, they've said uh, from another FBC, FBC member, mm -hmm. uh, from my mom, mm -hmm. uh, from a non-church member, mm -hmm. or who knows, it's, they could come from everywhere. Yeah. And uh, because it's a, it's a unique, and, and because we do it, uh, at it at uh, without charging for it, we uh, we have lots of customers, you know, <laughs> and it's amazing uh, uh, that uh, the people stick with it. Yeah, you know, no, it's really again just bringing exposure to this ministry at FBC. I think is helpful and beneficial. So, turning the page now to okay, the need that we have for more counselors, mm -hmm. and this is where uh, we can talk about this season of, of relaunching of ministries. And you have specific tools yes. and we call labs that mm -hmm. are an opportunity for people to attend on a regular basis to, not, training's not the right word, but be exposed to the ministry and, and yeah, yeah, get that proper training. Walk us through what that looks like and, and what season are we in right now for well, that kind training? Of regardless of where they learn about the, the counseling ministry, the, uh, a lot of times it's through uh, our counseling office, uh, sometimes through word of mouth. And uh, they, uh, they get a hold of, of uh, the secretary, Sherry Libby, mm -hmm. in our counseling office, and, and she tells them the, what we do, mm -hmm. basically. And if they want to become part of it, uh, normally it, uh, a lot of times it starts out of that once a, a month lab. Okay. They come in and they kind of listen to what we talk. We talk about different things, you know, different problems, you know, uh, um, uh, and you name it. We talk about uh, depression. Uh, we talk about uh, medicinal issues, how people maybe, uh, uh, you know, medicate rather than take get counseling and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. But we, we basically, um, uh, Sherry is the funnel. Mm -hmm. We call her the funnel. <laughs> In other words, and she kind of, uh, triages also mm -hmm. you know if she says well this person can probably um, they just need help you know they just need help uh, or this person wants to become a counselor mm -hmm. there's two different roads there yep. you mm -hmm. know and she points it in the right direction and sometimes she calls us up and so where yeah so where or when are these counseling labs okay the <clears throat> labs are uh, on a Thursday evening the second Thursday evening of each month mm -hmm. And right now, we uh, John Avery is taking us through a book called Saints, Sinners, and Sufferers, hmm. and uh, we read the we read the book and we discuss it and we talk about situations where some of that information is helpful. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we talk about a, t a topic, a specific topic, but if somebody wants to be a counselor, uh, there is a curriculum that has been created that can be used by anybody in this church or anybody in any other church 
to give them the basics of biblical counseling. Hmm. And so that is, uh, that's been used by other churches and because sometimes they, they want to be a counselor in their own church and they don't necessarily attend the lab, but they go through this material and uh, at the end of that, if they complete the material with, with somebody who's already gone through the material as a guide, then, um, well, in the past it was John Morrison, he would go through that, he would talk to the trained counselor who trained another counsel, a new counselor, and then he would recommend to the pastor of that person that they had gone through this training and that they might think about using this hmm. person in their church. Hmm. We're, we're hoping to expand this ministry hmm. to other churches. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. To, to be kind of the hub to then expand right. mm -hmm. and e train and equip mm -hmm. those around us mm -hmm. is, is impressive. I love that. And so the Counseling Labs, you're saying, it, it kicked off in September. Oh, right. And they're the second Thursdays. So this coming Thursday, the 13th, Yes. will be this really the second yeah, right. session. Seven so you haven't missed anything. No. I mean, you've missed one. Well, even if you very seldom do, they hinge upon the one before. Okay. They're, they are a standalone training. Yeah. Yeah. We are using this book, but uh, having just read the first part of that book, it you know they are, there's certainly something to be gained mm -hmm. uh, from any, count, any counseling lab. Do you have to sign up? Or let us know that. No, it's that we're always coming. nice to let Sherry know that yeah. you're interested. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's Sherry L at fbcva.org. That yeah. would be her. <laughs> that would be her. So contact or just call the church office Surely. for that. Yes. Well, um, I'm looking also, you can go online to fbcva.org slash biblical dash counseling. And that's the landing page that we have where if you need to point somebody in the direction who you feel like that, yes, they, they probably could utilize this service. Mm -hmm. um, you just click on the button that says request biblical counseling, right. and there's that mm -hmm. intake form right there for mm -hmm. you. Um, and it gives just an incredible wealth of opportunities for you as a church member to utilize this or to refer somebody and say, hey, this is an opportunity, and it's a great outreach tool. I, I just see it, as, again, because it's not a closed thing to right. say this is within our own church, but it's an outreach opportunity to say, hey, yeah, my neighbor, and they're struggling, and I hear mm -hmm. rumors of mm -hmm. separation or something like that. Mm -hmm. Let's get through this process together. And whether they know it or not, they're going to hear about Jesus. Yeah, right. <laughs> right? right. And, and the thing is, is we always want the people who are interested to be the one, not mm -hmm. the friend right. or the mommy right. or yep. the daddy or whatever, but that person mm -hmm. to, to call and, and be willing to talk. Yeah, yeah, that's good points. Well, you guys are great. Thanks so much for giving us the details of these, this behind-the-scenes ministry that is so valuable to mm -hmm. our church and for your loyal service over the many years. And and I know that, again, so many of us, I, me included, have come through your community group and have experienced <laughs> life with Spences, so yeah. thank you for that. Um, well, again, I pointed you guys to the website, fbcva.org, and then the slash biblical-counseling is the way to go. Continue to let us know what you guys want to hear and, and talk about and discuss. We continue to want to have testimonies and stories of what's going on with um, the church. Next week, we're going to hear a little bit about our finance um, status at church and just praise God for how he's gotten us through COVID and a little bit about biblical giving. The week after, we're going to have a recap of the Fellowship Family Meeting. So I'm excited about these upcoming episodes to come. So Ken and Rosemary, thank you guys so much for being here. And um, everyone else watching and listening at home, this is so critical. Let's um, let Christ be the focus of our lives each and every day. 